Joining us now, Sir Michael Singleton, political consultant, former campaign operations for Mitt Romney. I'm wondering if at some point there is going to be a little regret over the martyrdom title. Yeah, I would not hold my breath, Leland, and I'm not a betting man, but I wouldn't bet on this either. I don't quite think it really matters at this point. I think this sort of feeds into the narrative that a lot of Democrats are sort of pushing for, particularly as we gear up to 2024, which is, hey, the Republican Party has become a party of extremism. It's become a party that is hostile to racial minorities, case in point. Why bring up what this gentleman did to the past, which would take potential credibility away from that argument? Why has the coverage of the Tennessee state legislature been so different? If these were Republicans, and I'm, I'm going out on, on a limb here, but if, if these were Republicans in Connecticut over an abortion bill, say, they would be called insurrectionists and everybody would be applauding that they were, that they were thrown out. And I'm wondering, is the double standard just because of race or is there something else going on here? Well, I, I think... I think it's because of the issue, and I think also, Leland, that it's, it's, it is because of race, but to interrupt, let's say Democrats were talking about reparations, for example. Uh, let's say that they were talking about abortion, and Republicans decided to protest and interrupt the body that was discussing those particular topics. I can almost guarantee you Republicans will be painted as these are individuals who are anti-choice, they're anti-race, they're racist, they're anti-democracy. But again, that's not the case here because it fits a narrative. And in my position on this, I, I don't think they should have been expelled, but I do think they, that they should have been suspended. I don't think whether it's a Democratic-controlled body or a Republican-controlled body that any member can disrupt the body's ability to work the way they did. You cannot have individuals disrupting the process by storming in, you have no clue who these people are. You have no clue if they're armed or unarmed. So talk about a dangerous situation where people are angry, tensions are really, really high. I mean, there's a lot of different reasons, Leland, that I could argue for why that was uncalled for. I think there's a better way to articulate your opposition to something. They're elected. Go to the floor. Give a lengthy yeah. speech. Try to persuade your other members, whether successful or not. That's the way we discuss business in this country through normal, regular order. Yeah, I think the flip side of that, right, is is that if they had done that, nobody would have cared. They would not be you know, split screens of them on every major cable network for hours and hours and hours. They would not be national uh, political figures. I think you make a great point. Uh, it's why we bring you on is hats off to those Tennessee state troopers who are there who showed enormous restraint an enormous professionalism in what could have been an unbelievably combustible situation. Uh, as we watched that video again, I, I, I just thought of it and hadn't thought of it until you, you made that point. The, you, you come at this from a Republican standpoint. Are, are Republicans going to regret having thrown them out? Uh, it, it, would have, it wasn't really a story until they did. Uh, and now you have these, these additional people who have been elevated in a way uh, to the national conversation. Uh, that they never would have been elevated. You have Tennessee now on the map uh, with mm -hmm. racial tensions in a way you would have never had it before. I mean, look, I'll put it this way, Leland. Three weeks from now, no one's going to worry about this story. We will not be talking about those two gentlemen. Most of the American people will move on. They have far more important things to worry about, like inflation, the economy. Can they put gas in the car, put food on the table? I think from a political uh, position, this isn't going to impact Republicans' ability to maintain control uh, statewide in Tennessee. They may, in fact, be emboldened uh, because many Republicans may say, oh, well, it's about time that they're actually standing up here. I want to give more uh, to report Republican causes. So I see this both ways. With that said, though, I do look at the optics. And for a long, long time, Leland, I have put in so much effort to try to portray the Republican Party differently to communities of color because of the narrative and because of some of the more extreme voices that, that are sometimes really, really loud that misrepresents what conservatism stands for. From that position, I don't think it's helpful because on CNN and MSNBC yeah. and all these other outlets, they're constantly painting Republicans are bad, Republicans are anti-people who look different. That does not help the party, a party that needs, to be quite frank, re to reach out to diverse communities as the country becomes more diverse. And our base 
is starting to shrink, and we have to accept and acknowledge that reality, Lee. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.